Good morning, <clears throat> Pythonistas, world game players. Welcome to 2023 again. I'm kind of coming out of a tunnel over the year. Um, you know, during this last holiday season, I was doing a deep dive into data analysis and data visualization with Python. And what did that look like in 2023? And uh, Dash, Plotly, inside of Dash, Canadian company. Very interesting what they do. And if you pay enterprise, you can have like live dashboards of, you know, unfolding situations. Now, a lot of times that's not necessary. It's like not all data has got to be a real-time Twitch game or whatever. But, you know, driving a car definitely as we talk about Dash in the sense of a dashboard and I brought up the metaphor of a cockpit a lot, which is already a metaphor, but in, in terms of engineering, the airplane's uh, driver's seat is in the cockpit, right? So it's a, a matter of instrumentation. Some of it's read only, and then some of it's interactive. And the point of a dash application is it's a small flash application where you can use your lasso or your block and like pick out just some counties and then lo and behold, once you've done that, all the counties you've picked out pop up with their opi op opioid um, death rate, death due to opioids, overdose. They don't use the word overdose. They call it poisoning here. I think because they break it out, though, into unintentional suicide, homicide. But I'm not sure that <clears throat> there's any, let's see, if I go over over these, I can get some hovering data, some data pops up, but I don't see the breakout by cause of death, or I don't know, that wouldn't be cause. Should talk to Richard about all these classifications. What counts as suicide anyway? Why do we even have suicide instead of just homicide against yourself? It's homicide, suicide. Kill yourself, you killed somebody, isn't it? Or not? And then we could talk about abortion, I guess. My tendency is to see abortion as a concept, as something you can abort a human life at any age. So suicide is also kind of abortion. And homicide, it's like not, we don't call every kind of inflicted death uh, criminal. When we send soldiers, it's like they're doing it for a righteous cause or something. Suddenly the idea that war is mass homicide just goes out the window. Strange language, right? I didn't invent it. I wasn't here when people decided all this stuff. And I'm still not used to it. <clears throat> but I'm not saying I could just pull out a whole new civilization right out of my head and we could all live that way instead. I'm not like saying that. So focus on Grunch dashboards. I was just talking about Global Data Corporation. See, there's continuity here thematically. And I do like to keep it place-based to some degree, like here's my town, here's where I live, time and space-wise. I'd like to always bring it back to autobiography because I don't think I'm that special. It's not like I'm in God mode in a video game where I get to tell everybody, okay, now you all need to do this, now you all need to do that. I don't have that kind of power. I'm more here to just anchor a particular scenario of mine and do a good a job of it as I can. And I'm really pleased to overlap with these other, um, well, talking heads in this case, but there's Peter Meissen and what they talked about on Shrikant's uh, channel to some degree was their long relationship and the projects they worked on. And I, I wanted to bring up my 2000s, uh, when, when the play, right? The play in 2008, 2000. Um, here in Portland, and I also went to Seattle and saw the Bucky play. So let's see, Buckminster should get me there. My channel, by the way, if you're just joining me, you're wondering what is this about? I'm rambling on about Plotly. Is this is this like machine learning? Are we going to get into that? And it's like, yeah, we've been doing that a little bit. I've been talking about the chat boxes. We talked about Hugh Kenner, a close collaborator with Fuller in some respects. Right, and trying to get geodesic math out there. He was someone in the humanities who recognized that what, what was key in Bucky's contribution was the unit volume tetrahedron of unit edges, right? 
that was important. I think the preview, PCS preview, that was um, the show before the show where some of us got to go on Dymaxion Maps. So this is in Portland. I wonder if my Seattle picture is here. It was around Halloween. So there was some spooky stuff going on. I'm going through this, the Portland plays and stuff like that. Why? Because that's what Peter and Mr. Jacobs were talking about, Doug, is his play, The History and Mystery of Universe, that he wrote, and then he gets a lot of people to work with him. And uh, is this Peter right here? It's hard to tell. It doesn't say it is, but uh, I think that's the genie booth. And so, let's see, there was a conference that uh, Peter set up. I have a better picture of him in terms of being with CJ. Let's just do a search. Did I actually identify by name? Mizen. He's got, he's standing with Doug. Here, this picture. Oh, he was in that, description-wise. So there's, okay, so his eyes might be a little closed. But this is Trevor. Trevor Blake and Peter Meisen and D.W. Jacobs, the playwright we're talking about. And they are both on this call, the Zoom call of yesterday, hosted by Shrikant, talking with each other and with the other participants in this comprehensivist meetup. So their plan is to keep being comprehensivist about a lot of things, right? And right now they've turned their attention to Bucky Fuller. As I mentioned in my last video, at the close of 2022, this was going to be a good thing for us. We, the Bucky camp, and it's so far it is being a very good thing for us because we get to focus on the texts again as, okay, here's America's greatest futurist of the last century, and he's not talked about much. He could be. You know, given how they hype a lot of people, like Napoleon and stuff, I mean, given all the people that we do hype in history, it's left to a small, like, they're fringed people who, who promote Bucky. It's like, oh, look at them, disciples. It's kind of like marginalized weirdness. Whereas I imagine, like, kind of like the movie The Man in the High Castle, which is uh, about the Fourth Reich, you could say. I imagine an alternative science fiction world where in public school you actually learn from your teacher about the unit volume tetrahedron of unit edges and how that fits into language games like quadres, the kind of stuff I teach and actually do teach sometimes at the high school level and have the curriculum to back it up and so forth. So I live a science fiction scenario that, um, I mean, I've managed to turn it into reality for me looking at heat maps and stuff. But it's not like I'm a full-time synergetics teacher or anything close or that I even aspire to be. It's the world game aspect of synergetics thinking where, and this is what Peter and um, that whole group were actually focused on last night, was like energy mix, how much coal versus renewables. Talked a lot about renewable energies. And, um, you know, Peter founded the Genie Project, G-E-N-I, which is about global electrification. And, of course, HVDC is old hat now, right? We've got long lines everywhere crisscrossing the globe. So that dream of a global energy grid is largely in place, but people aren't really mature when it comes to talking about things like that. We're warned away from it. It's like, oh, you know, you're getting to the world of Russia and all this, like, you know, if you remember Rachel Maddow's rants and so on. It's like we're actively discouraged as a people from thinking logically about our Google Earth not that it's owned by Google or anything, but there's so much more we could be doing here. And there's so much plotly stuff that uses these crazy projections. Like I, I kind of was talking about, it doesn't really matter in this case that Alaska is fucking huge. Pardon my French. But, you know, we use a lot of Mercator and we don't ever talk about Fuller's map, right? Which I happen to have here. I guess I should just hold it up. People think of this map as more like a joke, right? <clears throat> kind of like, oh, that's cute. Ha ha. Ha ha. But people took, took it kind of seriously when it first came out. It came out, you know, in big magazines with front cover treatment and a critique that we were all looking at stupid, distorted maps. 
and people took that hurt a lot of feelings, you know, and like National Geographic kind of people sort of circled the line, uh, line, uh, wagon, circled the wagons, this foreign attack from a strange angle that our maps were crap. What was that about? And so they fought back and successfully defended themselves against the greatest futurists of the last century. Whoopie do. Uh, all of you against one and you managed to win. You know, his map is not in schools and the unit volume tetrahedron is not in schools. So you guys who wanted that to be stay fringe and stay marginal, it's like it looks like you scored. You've won. You've got the world you wanted now. This is it. Okay, do we get a turn? Do we ever get a turn? Like I pay taxes, religious freedom, all that stuff. When do we get schools like I want? Ever? So I create them for myself, right? And I've been doing a pretty good job. And um, I get to teach this stuff, share it with adults. No problem for me personally that much. I mean, I have my own travails as we all do, but I'm not trying to complain about my life. My life is, is okay. I'm not worried about me that much, but I feel like, wow, what a weird choice you guys made to just leave Bucky in the sidelines and leave a few very interesting people to talk about him in retrospect, but you never addressed like the first George Bush, you know, the education president, that's what he wanted to be. And I was writing to that office. I was writing people all over in D.C. I've been very upfront about what I want to do and the curriculum ideas. But all I encounter are, let me be frank, cowards. People who don't want to do anything experimental. The math forum, gosh, what a bunch of sissies. Of course, they went and deleted that whole archive so you'd never find out. Thank you, math teachers. All right. I'm just ranting now, but again, I'm trying to balance it out by saying I'm having a good life. So it's not about bitterness at that level. It's like I'm doing great, but I really am glad that some people are, are continuing to take a look at this fringy marginal stuff and asking good questions about American education. I'd rather have a civil war than fight Russia or something. It's like it's irresponsible to take all your internal crises and emotions and all your problems and make the whole world pay attention and care because nuclear war, right? It's like I feel it's selfish for Americans to let their fights spill over. So I'm fine with being the American Donbass out here where they take all our human rights away because of free cannabis and we don't demonize people the way they want us to. You know, Portland has already been attacked from Washington, D.C. So that's a civil war, and I'm happy to fight that. And you guys, you guys in the East, you're going to lose. In fact, you lost a long time ago, you f losers. So that's how I feel about the East Coast. I'd rather have that war than something stupid in Ukraine that we don't understand. Right. Americans, you just don't know how to have a fight in, inside your own ring. You always let it spill out and be everybody's problem where everybody really doesn't really need to care that much. So if you're not American, do not care about America. To care about your country, do that because America needs to learn that same thing. I'm not saying America first. I'm saying deal with your own problems. Deal with your own problems. And the biggest problem you have right now is you can't teach your number one futurist in your own public schools. That's a joke. Total joke. And I've been laughing at you for 40 years and will continue to do so. Let this go down in history as me mocking these imposters. No wonder we say the U.S. is gone. Clearly, we only have phonies. 100%. Fun. Welcome to the new year.